Western from Okay, from There Is Soul in Art. And her question was, Miles, what? you can tell the story better than me. No. You are. How we met. You are the one. No, Go you're back. the one. Come on. Don't be complicated. What happened was, as I was on the road, I was a truck driver. And I would you know, message back and forth people, even people I didn't know, just, just something to do to talk to them. And then one day, Miles messaged me. No, you didn't message me. Friend request. Friend request. Facebook. Friend yeah. request. She was working in Hong Kong at the time, so she, and she sent me a friend request, and I was like, well, you know, be honest with you, I ain't gonna lie. I was like, okay, whatever, and I hit, you know, accept. Now, I'll give you a backstory. There was a guy who worked for the same company as I was. He was a native Filipino. He, jo he joined the U.S. Army, did 20 years in the U.S. Army, and that's where everybody knows you become a citizen. He retired. And he was a he was involved in transportation, driving and stuff like that. So he jumped from a military vehicle into a commercial vehicle. And he worked for the company that I worked for in Montana. And it was it was kinda I mean he was doing what he didn't have to do. In other words, there was a lot of guys who were getting involved with uh, other girls in different countries, and there was some getting involved with with Philippine ladies. And he used to, I mean, they used to come to him all the time asking him questions. And the first few questions he would always ask is, where do they live? And they, he's, I believe he said he was from originally from the Subic Bay area, when the, mili when the U.S. military was there. The Sambales. Or that's where he joined. I know he joined there. So Ed was a good guy. He's still a good guy. Uh, he would ask, okay, where are they from? And they they find out. And it, actually what he did was, and I'd seen him do it a couple of times, he would ask some questions and they would write these questions down. And he says, next time I see you, just give me the answer to these questions. And was he Americanized? Probably so. In other words, he's, his, he didn't have what they call tunnel vision. In other words, he saw, he saw through all the BS. That's a better thing to say. And then the next time they see that, now, he never gave out his phone number or anything like that, because he knew people would be calling him like some crazy ass times. And guys would come and, you know, they had the, they had the answers to the questions and he'd say, okay, where are they from, blah, blah. And then he asked, well, how old are they? Oh, well, they're 22. They have any kids? Yes or no. Uh, are they working? Yes or no. And uh, do they live with their parents? Yes or no. And then he would give you his opinion on it. And I was talking to him one time. I never talked to him about Miles because I just never did. Because I believe me, watching all the vlogs and reading all the stories, I had my flags ready to be popped, okay? Because <laughs> I know some of the horror stories I heard about some of these guys where they basically get scammed, I guess you call it, oh. scammed. So I, I, I was watching out for it. Miles never asked for anything. I mean, there was guys that were getting raped through the cold. Man. They were getting raped. I mean, every time you turn around, there was a emergency. You know? And he would sit down and he would talk to him. And he would say, hey, man, you're getting scammed or, you know. And he always told me, he goes, what? I mean, and some of the pictures, these guys, these girls they were talking to, that was their... 
online girlfriends or internet girlfriends. That's what Ed used to call them, the internet girlfriends. Okay. You look at you look at these girls, and then you look at this guy, and you're like, oh hell no, <laughs> no, 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 no. No. I mean, there was one girl, okay, she was probably five foot five, she had a picture, and I don't know why she did this, well, maybe to prove her height, she was standing next to, like, you ever see them big uh, rules that they have on the wall? Mm -hmm. You see them in a doctor's office, it's got the feet on them, and a person will stand next to it, and they know how tall they are, mm -hmm. well, she was standing next to one of them, she was about five five, five four around there, but she had a very... Voluptuous body, I guess you could say. She had a tiny waist, and everything else was just fitting right. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to get too deep into it. I don't, you know, Miles might get pissed and beat me up. And I'm looking at this picture, and I'm looking at this guy, okay, and, and there's nothing to, don't take this the wrong way. In other words, the guy need to go on a diet. Let me just say that once, okay? The guy need to go on a diet. He need to back out of the buffet bars. Right, and he was kind of like unkept, is a better word. I don't want to. I don't want to say too much because I, I don't. I don't judge a person from the the, the book of. The, I don't judge a person from the outside. You see what's inside, and the most ninety nine percent of the time, they're really nice people. But and you look. I was looking at this girl, the picture of the skull, and I was looking at him, and I was like, oh hell no, and then. I was walking away. I didn't say anything because it's not my place. And then Ed came up to me and he says, he's being scammed. Mm -hmm. He goes, you see that girl? I said, oh man, she's beautiful. I mean, she had, she had hair past her butt, okay? Beautiful, beautiful girl. And he's like, yeah, she's being scammed. I, I don't care what anybody says, she's being scammed. But a lot of times when Ed was, if, if I was around, I would... Not that I was trying to, well, actually, Ed, Ed, when Ed spoke, he didn't care who was around. He just said what he had to say. And some people said he was rude. I said, no, he's just telling you the truth because that's what you need to hear. He doesn't sugar, Ed didn't say, sugarcoat anything. And then he came up to me one time. I think me and you were talking to each other for like, we never said we were boyfriend and girlfriend or anything like that. We were, we could say, well, friends more like it, right? Okay. We never, you know, she never, the words I love you never came out of her mouth, which was nice. Because a lot of these guys were like, after a week of talking on the internet, oh, I love you. It's like, what? What? <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah, and when I mean, we talking then, all of a sudden, I said, you know, she told me you, you were going home. Remember you were going home the first time? Yeah. And I said, you know, and I was like, you know, I was in a truck 24 and said, I lived, I sold everything and I lived in my truck and lived in the truck. I, I thought it was useless, useless paying rent when I was only there maybe two days out of the month, if that. So I uh, didn't even get stores, I just sold everything, you know. In other words, when I did buy a house or whatever, I wanted to start all of them. I just left a bad, bad, bad relationship. I mean, it was bad. And... I just wanted to start all over. So I went and visited her. I was. Huh? 2015. Yeah, and we got along great. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? We weren't phony. Matter of fact, she got mad at me one time because I have what they call night, night terrors. In other words, if the right combinations, combinations come together, I have a really bad night's sleep. In other words, if I get too hot and it reminds me of a place that I was at one time, <laughs> I start having, I start reliving things in, in a dream. And Miles was saying that I was yelling in my sleep. She couldn't understand what I was saying, but she said, you were yelling. And she was a little upset. She wasn't upset that I was yelling. She was upset. I think you were more embarrassed because her family heard it. But then Ronald, came to me and he understood where I was coming from. I said, I just, I, I just have bad dreams of things I've been through, you know? And he knew I was military, so he, he understood. The rest thought I could care less. I could care less, to be honest with you. But yeah, we hit it off right away. 
ัวคุณอยู่เก็บอนโตเก็บอนโตกิงแต่ first night ทุก I cannot sleep I cannot really uh, get my sleep anymore uh-huh. you talk about keep on talking just like you you are fighting or angry or whatever yeah. <laughs> but I think a lot of people when I came here were surprised that I didn't drink I, ne- I don't I don't drink I didn't drink I smoke yeah smoke Yeah, I smoked cigarettes then, but uh, I didn't drink, and they were all surprised, you know. But I could care less what they thought. I, I know it sounds rude, but it was just like you know, I wasn't there to to impress them, you know, and I wasn't even there to impress Miles. Miles knew all, basically knew what I was all about when I went. How the many first days time. is your the first vacation? Dude? How much? Thirty, thirty days. No. Yeah. It's just like 15 days. No, it was longer than that. No. Yeah. The second, the second visit is 30 days. I know that. 30 days. Yeah, I met some really nice people. Unfortunately, one of them, Ronald, he's passed away. Good man, honorable man, honorable man. You know. And he tried to talk to me as much as he possibly could because you know the language thing, okay? And I expect that I came into a country that. English is not the primary language, and I knew, you know. And even this, the, the guy Eddie said, "You might have problems talking to people." <laughs> and I said, "That's okay." But he did give me one advice. He says, "If they keep on looking at you while they're talking, he says they're talking about you." You know? Mm-hmm. He said they're talking about you, and he and he just told me. And if they start saying. They don't even know you, and they start talking, saying bad things. It's just pure. Je- that's just jealousy. You know, it just makes them feel better about themselves. They just sit there and talk about somebody. They have no idea who they are, but they're going to say bad things. It's just jealousy. That's all that is. So don't even worry about that. You got nothing to prove to them, and they have nothing to prove to you. Yeah, but that's how we met. We were Facebook friends. We talked back and forth. Not no no sex pics or anything like that. <laughs> sex pics. <laughs> so like weird. That, no, no fantasy talking. You know what I'm talking about. No fantasy talk. We're just friends. That's all. Really good, you know. And as time went on, we became better and better friends. And I think when I came to visit the first time, it was like you know, this might work. Because I, like I said, the whole time I had my flags ready to go up. You know, because you hear, especially from where I worked at, some of the guys that work for having these internet romances, okay, they were being raped. They were being scammed. Not all, but some were being scammed. There was always the emergency that came up. <laughs> you know, and he even told he even said one one time he told a guy, he said, let me ask you a question. He goes, say like right now, you start talking to a girl that was in. New Mexico or Florida or whatever in the United States, and she started asking for money. What would you say? I wouldn't give it to her. What makes so? Why is it different that you're giving it to the girl in the Philippines? Well, I feel. I said you don't know. He, he like I said, Ed was straight to the point, no sugar coating. He says, "Are you the only one that she's talking to?" And he goes, "Oh yeah." And he goes, "How do you know this?" But that's what she told me. Okay. <laughs> He says, you need to, when, when you're having a conversation with somebody, he goes, and they're saying certain things like, uh, like one week she tells you that her father passed away five years ago, and then all of a sudden next week she's saying that her father's in the hospital and needs a heart operation. <laughs> you need to write these things down as she's telling you, like, father's still alive, mother's still alive, grandmother, how many brothers, how many sisters. Uh, Any children he says you need to write these down because I'm going to guarantee you you're going to get you're going to catch on, especially if they're scamming you. You're going to catch them in a the lie. <laughs> the father's in the hospital, mother's in the hospital. My brother needs a motorcycle. Why is that you? Why he says why is that your responsibility? Are you married? Even if you were married, 
Why is that your response? Your responsibility is to take care of your wife. And if you get into a marriage with children, you take on that responsibility, but make sure she's not married. If she, the funny thing is, is that for the female, the Philippi, female Philippines, their life dream is to get married, have a family. Okay? That's their life dream. Am I wrong? Isn't that what they want to do in life? Get married, have children? For the most part. Now there is ones that don't want nothing to do with marriage or children because they got a biz they got something going on in their lives and they don't want nothing to do with it. You know, they got a good career or whatever. But the average province girl, get married, have children. Right? Oh yeah. Okay, now if you meet this girl and you want to marry her and she's kinda, oh, I don't want to get married, da, 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 there's a reason why. There's a reason why. She might already be married. See, divorce, it's very, you can get a divorce here, right? An all man. An all man, but uh, it's very, very it's expensive. It's hard, yeah, hard it's very expensive. and expensive. So sometimes they just go their separate ways. But how about if her husband, get, words get back to him that she's with an Americana, or they call everybody Americana. She's with an Americana. Ting ting payday. Because you can be arrested for adultery. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And it doesn't take much to find out they're married and all you gotta do what? Go to Bongai. Not Bongai, but the Miss Palatine. Go to Miss Palatine and say, hey, I wanna know if this woman's married. No, not in the municipality, in a um, national statistic office. How about uh, MBI? National Bureau. Go to MBI. They'll probably charge a couple hundred pesos, but I'd rather pay that couple hundred pesos and have a clear mind than finding out you're getting screwed later by some guy who wants some money from you or else he's going to turn your ass in to the police, to PMP. Right? Hmm. The, the um, office that you can really uh, um, get exact information is in a PSA, Philippine, nope. Philippine Static, Statistic Authority. Oh, Philippine Static mm. Statistic Authority? Statistic, yeah. Statistic Authority. Well, MBI would know too, wouldn't they? Uh, it, no? You, you don't know if the, N, if the name in NBI is me, was Mrs. or Miss something like that. You don't know what you are going to get there or single or or married. You if you want if you want them to do so, you tell them the married and then you tell them the if you know if she if you know she is married. You tell them the, fa the the married name, and then you tell them to them the single name. Yeah, but what? But, but the, the 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 national statistic office can you, they can they cannot um, now, escape that. What would happen? Say you 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 you're in the town that she lives, and you're just walking around. And you meet somebody, and you say, "I want to know, is she married?" Would you think they would tell you? No. They would know, right? No. Uh, yeah, don't, don't, if they know you, you have. Yeah, they they tell you, yes, he's married or not not married, still single. Huh? They'll tell you, but trying to get that information is probably going to be really really hard, huh? Because they don't want to come back on them. They cannot, they, they cannot deny it. They will tell you, tell the truth. You sure? Because, yes, of course. And then later on you find, thought, you find, uh, you find out that, that uh, he or she is married. So the people say that he is single. They get, they get embarrassed. Why For me, if you ask me, I will tell the truth. Uh. I know you. Well, you. I mean, the, your your husband 
passed away years ago, right? Yeah. So why would you go around telling people, no, I'm still married? You know what I mean? Ooh. When you're not. You, you tell if you're married, you're married. If you are married, you're really married. I'm but if you, that. you're a widow, you tell it if you're really a widow. The family would never tell you that, would they? The, the, the woman's family, they would never say anything, would they? <laughs> Why? Huh? Why? Why don't they don't say that? No, at the girl's family. Uh, if you ask somebody in the girl's family, they would never tell you, would they? Why don't, why they never told you? I don't know. No, Loyal, loyalty to the girl, knowing that no. you have something to yeah, offer. And then later you find out, you, find, you found out that she or he is, he is married. But they what don't care. care. They, don't mm. care. they don't care what a foreigner thinks. They don't mm. care. They care what somebody else in the family thinks more than what a foreigner thinks. You know? Don't, don't lie or don't trick up a one I'm person. Saying that. Yeah. What I'm saying is, I get the impression that the bond is so, well, most mm. cases, there are other cases it's not. The bond with the Philippine families is tight. They look out for each other in most cases, but some cases it's not. And, and usually with that part of it, it's jealousy, okay? But the, the bond of the Philippine family is very tight and they look out for each other. So why would somebody in the family say, no, she's married? Yeah. No, no, most likely it's going to Straight come back to the point. Them. If what, whatever they, somebody asks you, you have to answer it straight to the point. Don't, don't lie, don't, don't say me, blah, 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 blah. I understand what you're saying, but in reality, Miles, like I said, like I said, the, the bond of a Philippine family is pretty tight. Yeah, even but though... But there is no exceptions when jealousy comes into play. Even though... Huh? Even though... Yeah. Okay, that's how me and Miles met. <laughs> through Facebook, just started chatting like friends. And then I was like, one day I was like, I need to get out of this truck for a couple of days. She told me she was taking, she was getting some time. She was, it was Christmas, right? Right around Christmas, or I had Christmas. No. When was it? Summer. You sure? Yeah, April. Why don't I keep on thinking it was like January? No, no January is. Two. Wait a minute, it wasn't April. Wait a minute. Yeah. When I was there, we celebrated my birthday in June, so it had to be June. No. But it was Ronald's birthday too. Remember when we were at the beach? And we had... That is, that is advanced already. They, How did it advance? Yeah, they... What do you mean it was advanced? Supposed to be April... No. I know. July, I know I like July 29. I know I look like a real shithead. And not remembering. it's because your birthday already... Mine passed. Late. Yeah, mine late. passed. Passed already, so they combine your birthday and the birthday of Ronald. Ronald. Yeah. yeah, you no, can. I, I had a lot of respect for Ronald, man. He was a that very... is the, that is the, the third time you, I had the second. No, that was the, the, the first second. Time. Is that the first time? We went to the beach. Is it July? Yeah, I guess July. Yeah. yeah, July. Yeah, Bono was a good, good man. And then that's, and then you go back, U.S. at August something. So August three, I think. And, and I. Then, and then Miles was going to try to get a visa here. How much money did you spend on that? For the U.S. Yeah. It's, it's, 8,000 pesos, more than, more than 8,000 pesos. Spent some money, and what really irritated me is that, and now I see why people go the illegal route, okay? She was doing everything right. She had, how long was that, how long was that interview? Not even five minutes? Yeah. And the guy denied her. And the, because the agency told me that if the officer won't ask any papers except your passport and your application 
uh, or appointment letter, don't give anything. Oh, I understand that. You don't give them. So I give, I, I give only the yeah. the appointment and the passport, no, and then blah 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 in a computer, and then ask me question, and then three three questions. I get old, but I don't know why. And then he said, "Okay, better luck next time." <laughs> yeah, it's just, I thought I thought that was bullshit, man. A three-minute conversation. No, I'm not saying let everybody in the country, but how could, how how could they know what's inside of a person's head in three minutes? And they'll say, "Well, they're trained." Uh, uh, no, no. I mean, I'd sat in at times when I was in the military. I sat down and talked to people for hours. I brought about certain things, and it, it, and and that's when you get the information. You don't st you don't stand there, and you stood mm -hmm. the whole time, right? Mm. I brought asset, xerox of asset, uh, the 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 land, the property, and at least a car or owner. So mm. I get the the paper of that truck, and then um, hey, bank statement. At least five hundred thousand pesos. You did. You had more than that. I yeah. did that. I have that. Yeah, she she, she checked all the all the boxes and the on the questions they asked and the things that they look for. She and then them all. business. I have. I bring also my register registered yeah. business, the rice mill. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it was just. And I said, no, you don't let everybody in, but her age, she owns her own land, she owns her own business, she has all this other stuff, checking off all the boxes and all yeah. three-minute conversations, no. No. <laughs> and one, one guy is a foreign, oh, is a um, white, not, not black. They said they it. said the black no the black American yes. they are much better to approach than the white. I don't know. I have no idea. That's what the agency told me. Oh, so they were racially profiling. They are they are more are, are, they are more approachable. Uh, okay, yeah, they they. I know what you're saying. No, it's not trying to be like she says. They had two people do the interview. One guy's white, one guy's black. The, yeah. the, 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 I'll use the word minority. The minority is a lot more easy to go and a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the white guy is just a dick. This is, he's, they are very strict. The white guy? She is, she is a woman. Um, oh, it's a woman? Mm -mm. White woman? Oh, so you had the white woman? Yeah. Uh, oh. Personal, I uh, Embassy in Manila? Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah. White woman. I thought this it calls me from the the guy, the the male black male <laughs> American black. Male. I said I can I, I will go there maybe I I hope I can pass it to the <laughs> You can you Was can the woman kinda old looking with red hair? No, it's just like norm, normal, not greater. Okay, it's but a gray, I, greater. When I went and got my permission letter, which it's, it's, it's only it's saying that you're not married, you know, and you're not married in the United States and all this other stuff. The lady I had, man, she, the guy before me, okay, he must have been in his seventies, okay. And he had a, he had some uh, eye candy that was hanging on to his arm. She was like 20, and I'm not knocking her, okay, but I'm just trying to set up the, so you get a visual. She, she's in her 20s, early 20s, and she was a looker. And they were gonna get married, all right? And the lady's looking at him like, all right? And if she was asking him questions that he couldn't answer. Are you still married? I don't know, right? What? Yeah, and I was like, I'm like, oh, he's getting rejected. <laughs> the the woman who inter interviewed no, no, no. me is is just like boys. I mean, lesbian. Yeah, well, who cares? Yeah. Well, who cares? But uh, yeah, this guy was ahead of me. He he was asking. He was answering. He was 
He was giving the all the wrong answers to the questions. That's all. Lady basically said, so you need to the questions I'd ask you, you need to get the answers to them and then come back to me when you have them. <laughs> she came to me and she kinda she kinda had an attitude with me. I don't know why, because everything that she asked and asked me, I answered with the proof. You know what I mean? And just, yeah, you know, just <laughs> after after my maybe she uh, saw to my face that I am upset, I guess. And then I, after one month, you can go, you if, if if you decided to come back here, and after one month you can come back, and you're very well, you are very welcome. <laughs> She asked me to come back at, after one month. <laughs> I did just like walk away while while talking to me. I walk yeah. away. <laughs> and that's when we decided. I said, you know, Miles. She talked. She Miles was upset that night when they denied her visa. I said, you know. I said I'm ready to retire. I had enough. This is this is like. A day or two after the incident in Portland, Oregon, I said, you know, I'm ready to retire. I had enough. We have everything in place that we need to have in place in the Philippines. Mm. I think yeah. I'm going to retire. And I, that's I, when the very couple of days later, I pulled in the terminal in Montana, and I told them, I said, I'm retiring here soon. I'll let you know when. And they were like, why, why? I said, it's nothing against you. I said, that, that crap that went down in Portland, I said, I, I said, I'm done with this shit. And they, they understood. That was eight, 2018. Huh? Yeah. And then you come, you come visit at 2000, the next, next year, 2019, 2019 and yeah. for, uh, have the wedding. Yeah, we got married. Ma the marri married. marriage is really weird, man. Get it, married. It's like you're sitting down with a, it's a contract. There's no vows, nothing. It's sign here, sign here. Let me see your driver's license. Okay, thank you very much, you're married. And I was like, you see the look on my face? I was like, that's it? Yeah, yeah because no this is- No big ceremonies or anything. No, like because- Was it the mayor are, or the vice mayor that married us? Vice mayor, because yeah. we are already in old age. Yeah. And we don't need that, this and that, that yeah. thing, so- They wave, they wave the- uh, Counseling, you know, we had the workshop where you had to go and sit there for eight hours and listen to somebody tell you how to have a good marriage. Yeah. Some 20 year old trying to tell 60 year olds how to have a good marriage. <laughs> He's like, God, I was like, no, no. Did, hey, they need to do this. No, they don't. No, they're fine. <laughs> and that's it. And it even, even though. But. I, and, you know, I don't want everybody thinking. Miles and myself have a disagreement, and if I said it before, you have two people, one, one grew up in the East, one grew up in the West, different lifestyles, different traditions, <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, we, like I said, we have a disagreement, okay, there's certain things I don't agree with, but does, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter, no, but, uh, I'm a firm believer that, you know, if you keep on, if you make a mistake, it's, it's your, not, not, I'm not saying mine's, that if when you make a mistake, it's your job to fix it and don't go around playing the victim having somebody else do it for you, because then you don't learn anything. Or, like, we have a, we, our biggest thing in the States is once you get to 20, 21 years old, you're basically on your own, you know, you don't go running your parents every, every day, well, we need to eat. Well, if you didn't drink last night, you have money to eat, you know? That's just the way, I had no soft spot for, for, for a heavy drinker, for alcohol abuser. I have no, I have no, I just, that's just the way I feel, you know? And especially if you're married, you need to have your priorities straight. Your family comes first before your needs, and that's just the way I feel, you know? You, you you extend your vacation before, right? 
No. Really you, yeah, you extend it because after the application, we we never we didn't uh, finish that day, and then the 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 head of that office says that you need to wait 15 days to proclaim to tell to the any what are you talking about? the marriage oh yeah you need to what's that uh, announce yeah they need to announce that 15 days if you are married or i am married see like here and i, I might be wrong but from what i see okay the church wedding that's the church wedding it has no legal binding right in other words usually when a person gets married in the church they already been married they're just doing their vows before god right they, they now you apply your if you don't want if you don't want to get married inside in in the, in the municipality or what civil married you you still go there and apply and get the un 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 the application for the license unsigned but you get all the papers from the municipality with unsigned and then bring to the church and the priest will sign it there and back to the municipality oh, and so ask like them the to the I I thought you got married in the municipality and then you got married you know the you know in the church, I'm no. so, I'm so, okay. You That's, need to bring they that. They do the same thing in the states. Yeah. You need after the marriage of the church, you need to bring back to the main o the office yeah, where so you apply them, records. so that they can put them to records to the national or yeah the main office. And but, they but no, if it makes it there, right? Yeah. <laughs> they form they they forward your up your. If your, it makes it. Put it there. It just seems like a lot of things get lost too. Going from point A to point B, they're like, we don't know where. Not, not, they they don't need to forward in Manila anymore because they have every region, every yeah, every region have their own have their own office already. So the uh, your own office already they are they are the one who responsibility to forward to the main office. Every region, just and like here in Lawag, they have one here. And hopefully it doesn't get lost in the way. The... It doesn't, the paperwork doesn't get lost from here no. to Lawag. Lawag is the capital. You can so. get here. Once you enter your papers in the, in the PSA, they call, they call now, I, before it's NSO, they call now PSA now. Every PSA nationwide, here in Philippines and nationwide, you can find your name there. As long they can, they, 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 they forward your papers to that. Well, they know. I guess our paperwork made it to wherever important place it need to go because when, when I went to uh, MBI, mm -mm. they had you listed as my wife yeah. on the computer. Yeah. So it made it. They can. They can. Maybe the NBI will find it, blah, 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 your, your personal identification, blah, blah, blah. Here in Philippines, they saw you married here in Philippines. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm just saying. They, you, you were so you can, wife yeah, or so spouse, like if they want spouse. spouse, yes. Mm -hmm. So you cannot, you cannot deny it to that uh, NBI, in NBI here in Philippines. <laughs> yeah, and then I got my... They can trace your name. And then I got my permanent resident here. And now you don't know something, man? <laughs> it's not as hard as people make it out to be. If you get an agent. What was our agent called name? The name of the R agency? R R N G. Who? R N G. Yeah, they're, they're out of uh, Badak, B A T A C. Badak. She's the one that did up the letter, because your wife, you know, you have to have a letter from the spouse asking or, or petitioning. Petition. The uh, immigration is the, for it and everything like that. She just made it so easy. And I showed up at immigration in, in Manila. I walked into this room, it was so packed. I looked at Miles and I said, we're gonna be here a while, right? Nope, we went right to the front of the line. Yeah, that is the advantage of having appointment. Yeah. 
If you don't have appointment and you go there for sit down to to I mean, to get, get your application or sign the the application paper and give to them, that is the. If anybody's been to MBI, not MBI, but Immigration in Manila, the room that you wait in is huge. Okay. Oh, yeah. Every seat there was filled up and there was people standing, <laughs> waiting. And like I said, I walked in there and I was like, oh, Miles, we're going to be a while. No, she took us from right the door all the way up to the front. She handed, hand, oh no, a lady, before we got through the door, okay, a lady came out that was wearing a, like a yellow vest. Yeah. And had a name on the back. I don't remember the name. It's not important. And handed her the paperwork. And then she... Want like this to me, follow me. Of course, Miles went with me, just in case, you know, you need a whatever. And she handed a paperwork to some guy that was wearing a badge, some immigration, immigration badge. He took at it, told me, stand there, look forward, don't smile. Took my picture, took a thumbprint, and he says, uh, and, I, and the whole time, yeah, we're on our way eight hours, what, eight hours to get from here to Manila? Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking, oh, God, they're going to put me in a room. They're going to ask me all these questions. I hope I don't mess it up, you know. They didn't ask me nothing. They just stand right there, look forward, don't smile, take a picture. Took my thumbprint and says, you'll know in how long? A couple of weeks. Yeah. That was it. It was done. I know I know the the, the personnel that have but name at the back Lyson. Yeah. Lyson. And there was a British guy. He was funny. Remember that British guy that was sitting he was sitting on the he was sitting on the outer edge, okay? And he saw me come in he, you could see the look on his face like who the hell is this? Because he saw me walk right up, right? And then when I was I was in how long was that? Five, ten minutes at that? Ten minutes maybe yeah. long. And when I was walking out he looked at me and says, Who the hell do you know? And I said agent and he goes, damn I know I you know the 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 wife told me that they do the up uh, the um, appointment application direct to them but their 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 mistake is they didn't uh wait the um, mess, me, the email of immigration if the if their application with yeah. is grant was granted so or you can come and your ap appointment will be uh, your, with your appointment sleep. They don't have that. Well, remember, the agency, the woman had a, was it a brother-in-law or something like that in the family that worked for MBI? Remember? I cousin. Her cousin worked for MBI. Why don't we have to go talk to him? What? We had to go talk to him for some reason. Something got messed up. Not, I, not, we, 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 not as far as the, uh, something had to do with MBI got messed up. We went there, it's, it's all about the application of MBI. Yeah, something got messed up with MBI. No, the speedy, speedy process of NBI certificate. Yeah, yeah, we were waiting on a certificate of yeah. NBI saying I wasn't a, I wasn't a, you know, I wasn't a bad Because person. your, your op appointment of immigration is this date and your NBI certificate wasn't, uh, That's not that. Right. Yeah, they were not need, yet finished. Yeah, you gotta get when you got, okay, before you go to immigration or before they hand in your paperwork for immigration, yeah. They, you have to get an MBI, National Bureau of Investigation. You got to get a certificate from them. Clearance. Okay? Saying that you're not a bad person. You're not wanted anywhere. All right? Mm -hmm. Well, we were getting ready to go to immigration, and we, st we received nothing from MBI. <laughs> yeah, and that I was is... Like, I was like, well, this, we're dead in the water now. We can't do anything. So we went to the director of NBI up yeah. there and... Yeah, and it was her. It was her cousin, to, right? Yeah, talked to him for the SPD of processing the NBI yeah, the clearance. Day. Yeah, and then... Yeah. Okay, when you go, when you go to Manila, your, your certificate already done so we'll, I will give I just give to baby the agency well the that one guy who runs like every other day he went he went to Manila yeah that worked for MBI there 
that would go yeah. to the main branch in Manila. Yeah, see, he, he is the he he is the one who will go to Manila because he is the director. Oh, now I remember what happened. Okay, they submitted all my paperwork with not knowing that MBI never turned in no paperwork for me. Of course, mm -hmm. yeah, you're a good guy. Okay, they submitted it to immigration. Mm -mm. Okay, and immigration went, no, 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 that, that's another, I'll tell you another, this is another process that almost got screwed up. But, okay, everything on MBI went good. They got it there. Like I said, I walked in now, I was in there maybe five, ten minutes. They took my pictures, fingerprints, and I was out the door. It was when, and, and then, what happens is you go on a, what's it called? Probationary. Mm -hmm. You have one year probationary period, okay? I know it sounds all confusing, but it doesn't happen all at one time. Yeah, you might get bumps in the road, but if you deal, if, you, if you're involved with somebody that knows what they're doing, it's, it's, it'll be easy, just like I did. Uh, in other words, somebody screws up, they're there to make sure they, it gets fixed. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So, I was on probation for one year, and then you basically, I didn't have to go back to Manila, right? No. Yeah. Should, should uh, yeah, basically you did, you never, n no need to back to Manila anymore. The agency can do it, but it's still, they don't know that, it's still, they need your, MBI. your personal a, appearance. In MBI? In Manila. Well, for the second time? Yeah. Did I go the second time? Oh, yes. So Be fun. Because we talked to the lawyer. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, that's right. Now I remember because I, we, we didn't go to that big, that big massive room, okay? No. That's when the end, all okay, right, even though you're on probation period, okay, when you're going up to get your permanent, you still have to go to MBI again. Yeah. To make sure you still you, a nice, You nice never guy. committed me. Uh, committed crimes yeah, or whatever. Okay. And that's when the paperwork got screwed up. Yeah. That's when the paperwork got all screwed up as far as MBI. Okay, in other words, it, it just, it, everything was done, they just didn't forward the paperwork on to, to immigration. And that's where her cousin got involved. Because it was the day before when we found out and we were like, whoa, oh shoot. <laughs> no, it was two days before, I'm sorry, two days before, I'm like, oh man. In other words, we could have went to Manila and they said, no, we never got an MBI clearance for the second one. And that's when her cousin got involved and he told me, he says, yeah, you're good to go. It's just that somebody dropped the ball, okay? We said, all right. And he says, but tonight they had a runner. Remember the yeah, runner yeah. that goes to... Every, every, you know, couple of times a week he runs to Manila with paperwork yeah. from Lawag. The MBI in Lawag goes to Manila with paperwork, MBI paperwork. Mm -hmm. And he says, he's leaving tonight, he's taking it with him. Then the very next day, well, two days after I talked to her cousin, that's when we had to go back to Manila. But this time it was a face-to-face -face with a Interview. lawyer. Interview, yeah. All right. And they basically, you know, making sure you you are who you are and everything like that. And she told us, oh, we did get, we, yesterday we got the MBI clearance, so you're good. She goes, if you didn't get the MBI clearance, it would have been denied. And then you had to start all over again. I was like, oh, thank God. And all she, she didn't ask us anything, did she? Yeah, just, they, no, they she just asked if we had any pets. Huh? Well, I don't know where that came from. They just, but, they just only want to make it sure if yeah, you... Yeah, make sure that I was an actual person, which... Mm -hmm. Yeah, she asked, yeah, was, but what I felt bad is she came in on a day off. Remember that? Yeah. That was her day off from work. Yeah. She came in because I was... Because I guess with the MBI and everything like that, they kind of threw me in there. And she just said, I got it. I'll take care of it. Mm -hmm. And that's the only thing. She, you know, I mean, we sat and had small... Small talk, nothing personal, just small talk. And then she asked if we had any fur babies, and we were like, "What the hell is she talking about?" Because it didn't, click, you know, I wasn't there to talk about my dogs. And that's yeah, we got two ki ch two children. Yeah, we got two children. <laughs> and then she says, "Okay." She goes, "Well, you're good here. You'll know. You'll know within the next couple of days 
that if you got your permit, and then as we're walking out the door, she goes, don't worry about it. Takes it takes that long. You got your permit, don't worry about two, it. Two months. Yeah. Three, I, I should be two, two to three months. It's almost four months. Yeah, but, I mean, as soon as you have the interview, the, like, the second interview for the permanent, if, like I guess they let you know if you're approved, they know. I'm pretty sure they're the ones that say yes or no, the lawyer, yes mm -hmm. or no, and then it, and she told her, don't worry about it, you got it. And she said, don't, don't worry about anything else. Don't worry about, you know, the notification or anything like that. And you know, the one, the one who's sitting outside, there is one guy sitting there, that is the, that is the immigration personnel. The one is different, that immigration lawyer. <laughs> yeah, there is one sitting out I, before the door, the, the the entrance. Yeah, there is one there. That is the immigration. Remember the cats? The cats walking up and down. The, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm sitting there. We're waiting to talk to the lawyer, and there's these cats walking all over the place. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> there's like I don't know how many cats just walking around, <laughs> like they own the place. And I was like, okay, <laughs> all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people ask me, are you, are you going to go back to the States? I, I doubt it. I doubt it very much. You can. Just, I I just can, visit. But, just yeah. visit. But if you wish to stay there for long, longer time with families, huh? if you wish to go to stay there for a, lo a little bit longer for with the families, So that's our story. If we if we didn't get you all confused on our talking. <laughs>